was with the uh with the AC blowing cold. So right. we had somebody come out and uh and, and check it out and they came to find out that there was so the way So it, let me get this straight. You did the inspection, mm-hmm. you had a client call you after an inspection, and mm-hmm. you still went to that property and helped them remediate oh, the issue. We gave that them a full refund. Is, and you gave them a full refund. This man. This man. Before you even knew what was wrong. This man. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Selling Houston podcast. I am your hostess with the mostess. Courtney O'Conlamo, broker owner of Collective Realty Co. And today's guest, oh my God, don't do that now. Because I'm about to tell the ladies whether or not you're single, (laughs) you're looking a little too handsome. Am I allowed to say that? So welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is Javin. He deserves no introduction, but I'm going to let you kind of take it away. Tell me who you are? I know you go by JT. Mm-hmm. I'm calling you by your government name. That's Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. So, who are you? Like, tell the people yeah, who you definitely, are. Definitely. Tell them why you're here. I see you got your little logo on your shirt. Yes, ma'am. Smart. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, uh, <laughs> I do have an inspection after this, so that's oh. why I've got the uh, okay. got the work attire on. But yes, I'm uh, I'm Javin Webb. I go by JT Webb. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm a home inspector right now. Also, uh, we're also a construction company as well. Mm-hmm. We uh. We're based here in the Houston, Texas area. We work a lot with uh, with Courtney and Collective. Yeah. And uh, I'm from Louisiana, been in Houston probably about 12 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, between Dallas and Houston. Okay. Came oh, to Texas. You actually came to Houston to play football on the football scholarship. So, that, so that's what uh, really? that's what brought me to Houston. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's been a great time, you know, really enjoying my time out here. So I hate to pivot, but I really want to get into this because it's so interesting when I invite my guests on the podcast, I like that I don't know too much about your stories Mm -hmm. because then it allows us to dive deeper. And then my facial expressions never lie. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, really? So I had no idea that you played football. Yeah. But I find it incredibly interesting that so many athletes turn to real estate as their bread and butter Mm -hmm. if they do or don't make it in football they tend to still find a way to either get into construction or get into real estate in some way and then here you are a triple threat right you had construction i know you're doing inspections now Mm -hmm. what else did you do surrounding real estate so investing as well Mm -hmm. so triple threat for sure what makes football players jump into specifically i feel like jump into the air of real estate to kind of, you know, pivot, so to speak? Like, did you not make it Mm -hmm. in the football world? Did you make it? What happened with that? No, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, so I I didn't play any professional football. I uh, I only played college at the University of Houston. And uh, to be honest, why I would say probably just a lot of athletes and and specifically football players because, you know, we love football, but most of, most of guys playing football for the money. You know, yeah, everybody right. wants to get that big check. So if you're not able to make it to the league and get that big check, you know, your mind starts thinking, where else can I get a similar yeah. check at? Right. You know, you start reading books, looking online and stuff like that, and all roads kind of lead to real estate. I was, I know? said that in my mind. <laughs> I said that in my mind. Yeah. So all roads led to real estate in your research, in your just lifestyle. Yeah. And that's how it budded. Yeah, I knew That's about crazy. real estate before I even graduated college. I once I realized I wasn't going to the league, I was yeah. like, okay, let me start looking at some other options. Yeah, and real estate jumped out. So it's kind of sad because when I talk to some athletes that didn't quite make it, they sometimes don't get out of their head. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to pivot. They mm-hmm. don't know where to pivot. Um, so I like to hear stories where you actually come to the reality of what's happening in your life and try to figure that out. Yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. So tell me about like your journey from taking the new construction, taking the um, investment side of things. And then now you're into home inspections. I feel like for me, you probably made a whole lot of money at the investing and the construction side. And then you're like, you know what, let me do more of that work 
um, complacently. Mm -hmm. And let me get into inspections, which is probably a little bit less of like wear and tear on mm -hmm. your mind. Am mm -hmm. I right about yeah, that? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Okay. So I, uh, it, it's kind of, it's kind of funny how I kind of stumbled into real estate. So when I first graduated, I had just been reading about real estate, buying houses, flipping houses. Right. And I was really interested in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I saved up my funds. I uh, When I first graduated, I came out working as a construction superintendent. Oh, wow. So I was That's building big. apartments. Yeah, I, I went to school. I got my degree in construction engineering. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, from where again? In uh, Dallas, right? No, no, no. So I, I went to school. I played football at University of Houston. Okay. But I got my degree from Sam Houston State University. Oh, nice. Yeah, so okay. I finished my degree at Sam Houston. Okay. Yeah, How so old are you, may I ask? 32. You're only 32? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ladies, you heard it here first. Yes, ma'am. You're single as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma ladies, you heard it here first. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you're 32 and you've done all of that? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm still trying to do some more. You know, it's still a lot What's more next? that can be done. I'm uh, jumping ahead, but this is just so intriguing. No, yeah, we got some uh, some actual uh, single family and, and multifamily new construction actually developed by C2C. That, okay. That are coming soon. Uh, actually should be getting some permits before the year is over. So okay. hopefully breaking ground beginning the next year. Yeah, this is very fascinating. Okay, so let's dial it back a little bit. So you started with the investor side. Then you kind of transitioned into doing construction. Mm -hmm. How did it lead to inspections? Because okay. most people would argue that you would start with inspections and then build up to the more money making. And I'm seeing right. that you probably started high and now you're kind of making more money in your sleep and you still wanted to be in real estate. That's mm -hmm. what I'm guessing. But yeah. I would love to hear kind of what you had in mind. No, definitely. So I... Uh so, again, I graduated with the construction engineering degree. Right. And then I uh, started working as a W-2 construction superintendent with a couple of different development companies. Mm -hmm. with building apartments between Dallas and Houston. Okay. And then, uh, so, again, you know, as I said, I had, I had bought a house and I was flipping houses doing real estate during that time. And I, I had actually one time I had got an inspection done. I think I might have... Might have spent four hundred and fifty dollars on an inspection. And you was like, Ooh. it was a small house, yeah. And I got the report back from the guy, and I was just looking at the house. I said, man, there's a lot of stuff on the on the property that you missed. You oh, know, you the, as a, because as, you had so much yeah, experience. Yeah, I had experience oh, just wow. from building. You know, because building apartments, we're uh, as a superintendent, we're managing the guys, we're making sure everything gets completed yeah. correctly, and also doing quality control right? and, and inspecting all of these units that we're building. And that was my W two job, right? You know, so just from I was able to see what an inspector did on the side, and I was like, the kind of went off from my head, like, wow, you know. So for me, in the back of my mind, I'm hearing passion. I'm hearing you missed all these repair items or deficiencies in my home, mm -hmm. and I want to make a difference, maybe, yeah, and yeah, start helping people. Because just all jokes aside, and just we'll get into how we met and stuff like that, but. With my clients, um, you just seem to care so much. Mm -hmm. It resonates with them. It resonates with me. And to hear that that was kind of what sparred it for you is mm -hmm. kind of interesting because it shows. Like, and every time I meet you, if I pull up to an inspection and, you know, you are dripping sweat, 100 degree weather, you know, making sure that you're not missing anything, you yeah. know, possible. And then I love the fact that you have that experience because mm -hmm. since you've built homes, you can't tell me you don't know what to look for. You know exactly what type of mistakes get made because let's face it, humans are building these homes. Um, I think people really get away from that when they're buying yeah. these brand new houses. They think that they're foolproof and nothing can happen. Um, so I feel like I'm hearing that there was passion Definitely. That was birthed from you kind of taking that route. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I, uh, you know, I just, just as an inspector, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a title mm -hmm. that I don't really carry lightly, you know, just because of wow. how important you are in the construction process. And I think it's important as an inspector to understand really where you fit, you know, mm -hmm. in that construction process and what your job is to do. You right. know, your job is to make sure that you educate that client. And make them informed of everything that's going on with their property. So that way, once they move into their home, once they spent their hard-earned money, you know, that they've been waking up from 6 to 5 right. for the last 10 years of their life, you know, dreaming of, of finally owning the home. Yeah. It's my job to make sure that they don't move in. Right. And they had, they find out, oh, you know, I got to get a new uh, a new furnace. Right. I missed this. But, you know, now, now, you know, we've got a, we've got 
potentially huge problems, the home is settling, all type of stuff. Yeah. That I could have let them know, you know, ahead right. of time or gotten them the credits yeah, from the needed. seller, you know, during the actual, uh, during the option period yeah. to actually be able to help them get the repairs made so that way they're not in, you know, financial distress trying to trying to yeah. get, uh, get the property taken care of or anything like yeah. that. I just really find that, you know, the, the types of vendor partners that we bring into the firm, they usually have a lot of similarities and qualities, the same moral fiber, and not enough professionals are investing in the education and the empowerment of people that are looking to buy these properties. Mm -hmm. So to even sit down and speak to you this candidly, it just further lets me know that you're the right man for the job. I appreciate that. You know, we have a lot of preferred, um, not a lot, but I roll with three preferred inspectors. I'll just put it out there. And all of them have different qualities. Don't get me wrong. Um, However, I think that it's super important that each of you understand why we pull you guys in as vendors. And then to hear, you know, that you're out there trying to do the same thing that we're doing, Mm -hmm. which is protect our clients, educate our clients and make sure that they have all the tools necessary to succeed in homeownership. Um, It's not easy, right? But it's certainly um, a little bit better of a positioning and an investment than just never learning it and never understanding, you know, the ins and outs of how your property works. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So cool. So inspections, what, four fifty a pop? Like, what's the average? Because a lot of people out here want to know how much does it cost for an inspection? Yeah, yeah. What's the average? So I can I can only speak on our prices. I can only speak on our prices. Please pay yourself, guys. (laughs) Oh God. No, it's uh. So we start at three seventy five. Okay. Yeah, and then uh. How do we inch up though? Uh, based on the size of the home. Okay, wonderful. So three seventy five, and then. Let's just call it a 10,000 square foot home. What is mm-hmm. that going to cost? Because that would sound like the the biggest on the list, right? Yeah, definitely. I'd have to pull out a calculator because then it actually comes down. Oh, we have a uh, square foot? Yeah, we have a oh. price per square foot once it gets to that size. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what is the largest home you've inspected and how much was it? I did a... Uh, I did an 8,000 square foot home in Bender's Landing oh. up in oh. spring. It was, it was a beauty. It was a beauty. And that one, I think, came out to be around 2,600. What? For the inspection, yeah. He wanted to do a the termite inspection. He did water tests. Beautiful. The whole nine. Do you do pool inspections? Yes, ma'am. We do pool inspections, septic tanks. Uh, did it include all of that or that? So was he based? didn't have a pool. Yeah, that was he had the base inspection. He wanted to do a termite inspection and then water testing as well. Okay. Well, you mm-hmm. heard it, guys. I mean, really think about these bigger homes that you're looking to purchase and what it costs to mitigate your risk. Because all JT is doing is finding everything imaginable that he can, you know, wrong wrong with those properties and then looking for ways to mitigate your risk. So you want to buy the 8,000 square foot home, you need to be ready for like a $2,500 plus inspection yep. because most properties are going to have a pool at that size mm-hmm. so i'm actually surprised that it didn't right and you're going to want to get the pool inspected you're going to want to get um you know all of that stuff checked out before you proceed so that is really interesting mm-hmm. yeah. damn okay i've never had a 2500 hundred dollar inspection yet. yes you don't get too I'm many get of those one. but i'm gonna yeah. get me one <laughs> okay so cool so that's the cost that you're looking at um, tell the people a little bit more about how long these inspections take and what are like the main things that you're yeah, looking for. That's the thing. So, uh, it's not a quick process. You know, we're at these mm-hmm. houses, sometimes four hours, sometimes five hours, you know, just for a standard 2000 square foot house. Some of these larger ones all day, for example, the, uh, the 8,000 square foot in yeah. landing. It's an all day. That's an all day from eight in the morning till about six, six PM. What? Oh Yeah. Wow. Yes, okay. So yes. how are you like what does that look like? Like you bring lunch, like you Yeah, you take a lunch break actually in the middle. Break. Yeah, you just uh you try and I mean it, all houses are the same, whether you're inspecting a fifteen hundred square foot home or eight thousand right. square foot home. It's just There's usually a lot things. more empty space, you know, the living room is just gonna be a lot more blank floor, you know, this and is you fascinating. Have, it's about this, you know, same number of walls, but you just have a lot more floor space. Okay. You know, so you have to uh as far as when we're inspecting, you know, we we got a lot a lot more space that we have to cover. You know, okay. a lot more space that we have to check. You know, we uh we do the same procedures as we would a small house for checking the foundation, 
Mm-hmm. Walking the roof. You know, we walk the roof on yeah. this 8,000 Oh, so you're not one of those drone roof inspectors. Nah, nah, we get you're getting up, up on there. Yeah, we're getting up there. Okay, so what does that look like? Because you, do, like, do you have consultants yet? You can't possibly be doing all of the inspections right now. Uh, So right now, I am. You I'm, are? I'm, I'm glad I'm here because if anybody does have their license and they're looking to find some employment, oh. please reach out and give us a call if anybody we is got one interested. Over Okay, and y'all yeah, would be a, an impactful we'd duo. Be a great, we'd be a great team. Okay, Tristan. We can definitely do it. I think that sounds like trouble, though. I ain't going to lie. That sounds like <laughs> some trouble. <laughs> yeah. Might be a little trouble, but we're going to get the job done. Okay. We're going to get the job done. Okay, cool. Okay, so cool. So I really want to know how you found us because we have a beautiful office. We always showcase it online. Um, I have a lot of really good, intelligent, yet beautiful and handsome agents. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like because of that, because it's a good look, we do draw in a lot of attention, but I always tell people the look is cool, but you kind of got to have a brain to kind of keep you know, the momentum going to keep the relationship flowing. So how did you meet us? Like, where did, where did you come from? Because you came out of nowhere. No, yeah, definitely. So, uh, and my other inspectors are mad. (laughs) (laughs) I think, uh, any, any great inspector knows, you know, that a lot of, a lot of his leads are going to come from real estate Mm -hmm. personnel. So in, in understanding that, you know, as a, as an inspector myself, I was always constantly looking at, who are the top producing agents? Who are the top producing brokerages? Mm-hmm. You know, where are like-minded people who I can see myself fitting in with? And during that search, you know, I would always constantly see collective. You know, collective. Constantly? Collect, constantly would always see collective. You know, just you can go on Instagram, type in the hashtag Houston Real Estate and scroll through. And as you start clicking and looking through people's profile, you'll see collective. Collective. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was a, broker, a brokerage Thank that you, had. Thank you, Tristan. Uh, yeah, it, uh it had resonated with me and I, you know, I, I, I very early on identified, you know, that's a, uh, that's a broker that I'd like to work with. Okay. And then, you know, once I, uh, actually, so I did an office visit to actually come and come and introduce. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta put your card out there. Hmm. Sometimes you gotta take your shot to ever get that opportunity. So right. I, I did an office visit, you know, I came and uh, spoke with the receptionist, spoke with Courtney mm-hmm. and, uh, you blessed me with the opportunity to come in and talk to your, your brokerage. And, yeah. And uh, do a continuing education seminar for for your agents. So I had an opportunity to come in, speak with the agents, you know, uh, introduce myself. Yeah. And ultimately just really, you know, heard a lot of great feedback from your agents about you. And oh. just about how great of a mentor wow. and just a, a teacher, you know, of real estate that you are for them. And these were genuine conversations that I was having with your agents just off to the side. Oh, wow. And even after meeting them, you know, just curious, you know, how do you like, how do you like right. collective, you right. know, and, Everything was, was, was uh, you know, nothing but great reviews. So that, that really speaks to, you know, a testament about you and your character wow. and just how you run your organization. And, uh, you know, ultimately, like I said, you know, I, I identified early, you know, I would love to be able to bring some value yeah. to these and ladies, you, have. you know, and I'm, I, I wasn't sure if I had an inspector already, you know, I yeah. just, I just was. You shot was, your shot. Yeah, I was, I was very confident, you know, just in my knowledge and, and in the, uh, you know, the volume that y'all do. I just felt like I could really bring some value. Yeah. You know, I like to your that. company. I like so that. I, and mainly because, you know, when we get poached, whether it's by new agents, inspectors, title companies, like walking in the building and having to have my staff greet you and talk to you and hear what it is mm-hmm. that you have to say, it's so much different than sending me a DM or mm-hmm. calling me or mm-hmm. texting me. That's what everybody's doing. Not everybody is walking through those double glass doors and saying, hey, give me a shot. You know, let me show you what I can offer and let's, Mm -hmm. you know, get this thing going. So I find that extremely interesting. So good. Good. But you got to be prepared for the no's, too. Yeah. So you've been told no? Oh, yeah. All the time. Talk to me about that because I just don't understand why. Hmm. I think I do, but never mind. I mean, you always, I mean, there's anybody who's the business What happened? I need to know what happened. You got to always, you can always want to you know, push your business forward. So you're always constantly trying to network, trying to push the envelope right. forward and going into, you know, rooms that you might not necessarily, it might not be people who look like you in those rooms. So is that who told you no? Because I need to know. Oh, I, I've always oh, Give me no's. one no. Give me one plenty no knows. story. 
Because I just don't understand why you would turn down a resource like like an inspector, maybe a lender, because I feel like, you know, not all lenders are created equal. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But we have more of those people knocking our doors down than we do trusted inspectors. Really? And yes. And for me, the value of a lender, second to none, right? I get mm-hmm. it. But an inspector... I don't, I'm not a transactional broker. Mm-hmm. I am a relationship broker. I am a protect mama bear broker. I am not letting my clients buy a house that is not sound. Mm-hmm. And if my inspectors are shooting the shit, pardon my French, and just not really focused on finding issues or going above and beyond to educate my clients, I don't even get to the loan process. Like right. you're the very first piece of the transaction. So yeah. for me, like that is super important and it has to be right. Yeah. And trust me, these inspectors are not knocking down doors to get into these spaces. So that's why I was very intrigued by the no's because they're not yeah. common. I would think. No. Yeah. But, but something you said was, uh, I think you said something great when you said that you're, you're a mama bear broker. You're not mm-hmm. just a, you're not just a transactional agent. Yeah. When you you've got a lot of transactional agents in the real estate space, you know, so you've you've got, oh yeah, oh yeah, just because I'll get hired, I'll get hired by clients a lot of times, and so their agent didn't necessarily hire me, but their client did. Oh, okay. Their agent might be a transitional broker; they just want to get the deal done, you know. So there might be a lot of small, you know, it might be you know just a little bit more of a hassle that the the agent they have to follow up with the with the construction salesperson to make sure these things are done. And they might not want to go through that headache, you know. So they, you know, if they get a, a report that's very detailed, you know, that's got a lot of small things that they are fixable that they it. can fix. They just don't want to go through the headache of having to, you know, bug the sales rep like, hey, touch up here, you yeah. know, get this fixed, adjust wow. this door, you know, the small stuff. And you've stuff. seen it. Oh, so yeah. what, do the clients come back to you and complain that their agent didn't do X, Y, Z? Or yeah. They Sometimes they well they they reach back to me and they'll say you know I, I need some help with getting getting the uh, getting these repairs taken care of. That's sad. That's so sad. Yeah, and it's you know I I'll never throw an agent under the bus or right, you know right. I'll never be like I you know your you agent should yeah. do that. You know I always help them you know yeah. assist in any way I can. Yeah. And try and uh, you know go through the report with them and you know put up basically like an action sheet of what they should ask to get right. done. But it's uh I mean it's really it's it's a, it's a uh, as an inspector you've got to really. You've got to gauge the agent that you're working with because you can easily pick up and tell, you know, Damn. you got some agents who just would love to get a blank inspection report and say, okay, you know, let's go to the list. Let's, let's if go I on. see 32 recommendations, I'm happy. Like yeah. I've seen 80 and even 80 may not be that, that bad. Yeah, it might not you be, know, yeah, right. It might not be that so bad. for me, I see 30, 40. I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're good. Let me look through this. And they're mm-hmm. probably just standard you know, wear and tear things yeah. or easy fixes that can be done in minutes. Definitely. definitely. Um, and you're absolutely right. Not enough agents um, invest the time into reviewing inspection reports. Um, I think it's important to be transparent, though. Mm-hmm. I think every agent starts that way. Mm-hmm. I started that way, too, where you just rely on your inspector mm-hmm. to explain everything versus actually reviewing it mm-hmm. and actually just seeing what you know, those recommendations are and trying to find ways to price them out, trying right. to find ways to get through to the seller or the builder mm-hmm. in terms of which ones to take seriously. It's it's practice. It's it's something that you have to do kind of like exercise. Yeah. So I think that here at Collective Realty Co., we focus on all of those training aspects because I want them to be well-rounded agents. I Mm -hmm. want them to be, you know, well-versed in that category because if you're not, then you'll get these, you'll get these inspection reports, you'll get these deals and then you won't see them to the end. Mm -hmm. They won't matriculate if you haven't faced the issues and yeah. realize that all you're here to do is problem solve. Yeah. So yep. I think it's really, really cool that you actually see that. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think it's really sad that that's what's going on out there. So we're trying to change that narrative mm-hmm. for yeah. sure. So you talked about clients and kind of how they find you. I'm very curious about that. How are these clients finding you instead of looking to their realtor mm-hmm. to give them recommendations on 
who does a good job and who does it well, et cetera. No, How definitely. are these people finding you? It's actually a uh, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. Okay. You, have, you have some clients that go with their agent's recommendations. Yeah. Then you have some clients that go the opposite direction. Yeah, because they're like, the the, are they biased? Something exactly. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they hear, you know, the agent recommended, then they, they want to go with somebody completely right. different. Right, right. So we get, uh, we get a lot of our clients, believe it or not, through word of mouth. Nice. So we, uh, okay. We 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 work really hard with our social media. Right. But it's kind of hard to really gauge, you know, how many leads you're really getting from exactly. social media. But I, I, I have been able to gauge. You know, we get a lot of clients from word of mouth and just from yeah. a lot of people. Just you know, really saying, we just we really loved how thorough you were. We loved how much time you took. You yeah. Know, just how you took your time, and that's really you know just really doing a good job and really uh just trying to treat every home like it's yours. That and is, really, that's really, it right uh, there. That's you know, the I, statement right there. I think there. it goes for both of our, you yeah. know, just as a real estate professional and as an inspector, yep. just really acting as if you were in that process and really taking ownership and caring. People right. can tell. Right. Wow. Because that's so true. Yeah, people can tell. So with those clients that find you, I'm sure you've had a lot of agent referrals too. Mm -hmm. Tell me about like one story where, you know, maybe something was missed or maybe the inspection didn't go as you planned mm -hmm. and you don't find out until after closing this happens to the best of us so i'm just very curious as to if that's ever happened to you Definitely. how you navigated it how you perfected it what did yeah. that look like so it's actually uh, it was a great it was a great uh, great learning tip so we had a uh, we had a home that i did an inspection for it was a it was a realtor referral okay a realtor we do quite a quite a lot of deals for okay. he uh, he referred us a home we did an inspection and uh, everything everything checked out fine in regards to the AC system when we were in the property. Okay. But about a month later, after the uh, after the client closed, they were complaining that the uh, the second store it wasn't cooling. They weren't getting any uh, any uh, any cold air coming to the and, second. And pause. How old was the unit? Do you recall the home? The uh, unit, the AC unit. Oh, oh, the, I, I can't tell you okay. off my head. I, okay. Just, just it was it was a, it was a while ago. I can't tell you off okay. my head. But it was uh. The AC unit, they they said that they were having some problems with the uh, with the AC blowing cold. So right. we had somebody come out and uh, and, and check it out, and they came to find out that there was so the way. So it, let me get this straight: you did the inspection, mm -hmm. you had a client call you after an inspection, and mm -hmm. you still went to that property and helped them remediate oh, the issue. We gave them that a full is, refund. and you gave them a full refund. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Before you even knew what was wrong. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That, ladies and gentlemen, is customer service. Yes, ma'am. That is knowing what the hell you're doing. That is relational business. That is unbelievable. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Ma so you went back to the property after giving them a refund and you did what? Yeah, so we checked out to see what was going on and we actually found out that there was a, uh, so the way the AC works, inside of your home you have an air handling unit in your yeah. attic. I'm mm -hmm. sure y'all might be familiar with what's in the attic. And right. then you have the large condenser outside. So from the condenser outside to the air handler in the attic, you got two copper wire, or two copper line sets, and they basically carry refrigerant from the uh, condenser to the inside unit. Got it. So if that becomes punctured in any way, sometimes it'll leak uh, leak refrigerant, and then the uh, the system will have a hard time cooling. Okay. So what happened in this situation was there was actually a refrigerant leak, but before we did the inspection, it was a flip house. The uh, Oh, that's a big detail. Yeah, the, so this was an investor that came yeah. in and did a complete remodel. Mm -hmm. Okay. They did a flip house. So we came we actually were able to find out that right before the uh right before the inspection that the flipper he had he had charged the system up with refrigerant so that way it was blowing cold there at the time of inspection. But over time, from after the inspection to the time of closing, once the client moved in, all of that refrigerant had, had leaked, leaked out. out. Yeah, so once they moved in, the uh, the property wasn't cooling anymore. Wow. Yeah. I could go so many different ways with that, but we don't have enough time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, We're we going to talk about that offline. But how do you know that it was intentional by the the flipper or investor? Yeah. Like, so, we know that for sure. So we reached out to the agent. Because oh. the agent, the agent, uh, you know, he initially was called and was he was very uh, frustrated too as well. And okay, because he was, was, he was the agent. Yeah, he exactly. wasn't the Yeah, flipper. he was the agent. And he was kind of like, you know, I'm... I'm yeah. recommending you. You know what's going on. Right. I agree. Oh, the so same this way. was the buyer's agent yeah. that was frustrated. Yeah, okay. yeah. This was the. Uh, this was right. again. This was you know I got referred to this right. to this client by the agent. Right. 
So, you know, he was very upset, you know. So we had, you know, we did more investigating. You yeah. Know, looking into the uh, looking into the property. Right. Reaching out to the uh to the previous the pre not the previous, but the uh, the selling agent. Right. As well as reaching out with the investor. Right. And come to find out that yeah, that he actually did uh he recharged the system prior to wow. uh, prior to the inspection. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the at the bare minimum, not only did you correct the issue. You also gave them a refund. You also now know on future deals. Oh, yeah. Kind of what you should inspect, expect and inspect for oh, that yeah. matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, you can't assume anything with the house, especially a flip house. I mean, it's, you can't assume yeah. anything. You have to literally, I mean, even if it's working, you've got to check it just to make sure it's, right. you know, that there's nothing that they're covering up or anything right, like that. Right, yeah. And now you have an extra lens. Yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah, it was a great learning experience. You know, now that's that's a part of our protocol when we inspect, you know, even though that the AC is blowing fine, we're going right. to still check the line set just to make sure yeah. that there are no leaks or anything Because it gets like over that. 100 degrees in Texas. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> we need the AC. Yes, we do. <laughs>
I don't know if it's an obsession. I don't know if it's just all I know, you know, just honestly, just always striving to be better. But I don't really, I don't have a solid reason why I do this other than to just be better than I was. Yeah. Is that good enough? <laughs> Oh, good answer. Yeah, I won't make you take a shot. That's, oh, God. That's, that's good. Oh, and I don't think you... Did you explain that part to him? Oh, no. I did You said not. you were going to kick him you, out. CJ. Yeah, you said you were going to kick so him out, but... So, basically, if you don't answer the questions honestly, or we feel like you lying to us... You got a drink. We, we make you take the shot, and then we kicking you out. Like, that's uh, what we're doing. Uh, okay, so now that you know that, question number two. How many questions we got, CJ? Just three. Oh, just three. For each. Right. We're taking it easy. All right. And the, you know... Okay, never mind. Yeah, switch it up. Like, well, make them sweat. I think these were, this is a different deck than we had before. Okay, so these are these are more, there. like, insightful kind really? of questions. Mm. Yeah, so, all wah, right. Wah. Oh. <laughs> Tara, JT. we're going to get a question from you at the end. Oh. Spice it up. Oh, go ahead and Google. JT, what are you curious about lately? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh... I'm trying to make it make it lighthearted and playful. I'm, I'm honestly, no, don't make it nothing. Okay, be truth. for real. Oh, or I'm gonna make no, you take no. the shot. So, there I, she go. I'm honestly curious about this real estate market. That's what I'm, I'm really I, I'm, in all honesty. I'm very curious just to see what the market does, just what okay. the economy does. Because I think everybody, I mean, just like how you were saying yeah. with the rates and everything, is it's a weird time right, right now. It's a very weird time. So it's. And let me speak to that weird time because I feel as though you're absolutely right. We would all be remiss to just kind of skirt past that. But if I'm not, first of all, majority of my business is first time home buyers, people mm -hmm. that own nothing. And investors, you guys can feel like this is a weird time and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. People that own nothing, you don't get that privilege. You don't get to do that. I need you to, at minimum, own where you live, mm -hmm. and then you can have those types of thoughts about yeah. you don't know where this is going, and you don't know what's going to happen. But as long as you need a place to lay your head, I need you to get your head in the game, mm -hmm. and I need you to actually do what you need to be doing, which oh, is definitely. buying something that's going to appreciate in value at least over time. We mm -hmm. may see a little bit of a sink. I read this morning, though, within the last six months, home prices have risen. Everybody has thought that they were going to drop. Mm -hmm. Within the last six months, they have steadily risen. So I don't know that that time is really affecting everybody's need for housing. Right. So that's my spill. Sorry to take your question. No, no, though. you're fine. You're fine. Because that's, that's... I think it's interesting. Because yeah. I think we're all worried, or at least concerned. I not worried. It's just, I just, I guess you want to know what's going to happen so you can know how to proceed. It's like, you know, if it ain't changing, we got to get used to this and keep and on And you'll rolling. never know. Yeah, That's never the biggest know. thing, is that know. we'll never know. Yeah. And I don't live in worry. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. Cool. What y'all think? He being for real? Yeah. He was? Okay. Being for real. All right. We all right. Your that. turn. <laughs> <laughs> we going to take that. All right. Courtney. What do you mm -hmm. wish you knew? So I really hate to rain on y'all parade, but we have said both of these questions before. Y'all don't remember that uh -uh. in other episodes? You remember that? Because I, I think I cried on that question, and it was what I wish I knew, and I said I wish I knew when I was going to make it. And I, oh. I ain't made it yet, y'all. I know okay. y'all think I, have, made I haven't. It. I ain't made it yet. Made it. Okay, well, <laughs> let luckily, me get another one. Let me yeah, get a redo. I got you. What makes you lose track of time? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I hope lately. you are. Oh, God. Lately, it has been social media. Mm -hmm. I used to not fall in the social media ditch. And I find myself doing that a little bit more um, than normal lately. So you get on there and you lose track of time, literally. So the what I want to say to that, just to kind of turn that around and let y'all know what I'm doing to combat that, is you have got to keep your calendar stacked. You have got to keep your priorities in line. And the more you do that, the less time you have to do that. But I have to say, in the beginning of the day, like I get lost in the sauce on social media, uh, the sauce that is social media. Let's just say that. 
So we got to be careful about that. I think everybody feels the same way, but oh, yeah. I even have those little timers on my thing now. Like same here, fifteen <laughs> minute timer for I the day. I need to be managed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> It'll get you. So that's why I'm spending too much time lately, or whatever that whatever that was. What we got next? Okay, last question for JT. What do you wish more people knew about you? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Uh. I wish people I wish people knew uh knew more about I guess how how important it is to uh to just have an impact on people. A lot of time in my free time I I'm a I'm a uh, I'm a member of a nonprofit organization called Faith First. So we do just a lot of stuff for the community, you know, just uh whether feeding the homeless, we do uh wow. Thanksgiving dinners and stuff like that, Christmas Christmas giveaways, you know, I'm just I'm real big on just uh just real thankful, you know, for the opportunities we have in life. Everybody wow. don't have the opportunities we have. So just, uh, you know, just try and be a blessing to others and, and hope that, you know, like you say, we ain't made it yet. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. our blessing come to both of us. Right. And we can And we're going to watch this day, episode you know? and be like, damn, we made, we made it. Made it. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, we're going to watch it and say we made it. So that. since y'all have that in common, I'm very curious. Oh, what, we do what, have it in common. Y- yeah. Wow. What What does success look like and how do you know when you get there? Have y'all thought about that? Mm. For me, I mean, I think I, and I identified it in that episode, you know, and I'll just be transparent right now. Mm. Um, I've been in my first home purchase for like 12 years now. I bought it in 2012 and my family and I were semi outgrowing it to the point where we're looking to kind of take that next step and actually, Um, get something that is a little bit more conducive to our lifestyle. And the kids are getting older. And obviously, we're going to transition it into a rental property, but we are looking to buy another house. And we're in the process of going through that grueling (laughs) Mm -hmm. situation. It is harder than I thought it would be, especially since I do it for a living. Um, So it's giving me another perspective You know, I've only had my own perspective and you need to do it this way and this is how this is done and I'm not doing, you know. So it's giving even me and teaching even me new ways to, you know, look at the bigger picture. But saying all that to say I'm in the process of leveling up into that. And before I do that, I need to make sure that everything around me is sound. I don't believe in, you know, creating chaotic situations. And I feel as though, you know, when I get to that point, everybody around me is going to know it. It's going to be very, very clear. So, you know, I'm going through that right now. And um, for me, making it, I, I want to get to that next step comfortably and effortlessly, if you will. So I don't want much out of life. You know, I'm very Mm -hmm. simple. And I know people don't think that, but I'm easy to please. And I'm not, you know, looking to be some crazy billionaire. I need to be a millionaire, though. (laughs) I need that. What you need? A millionaire. millionaire. (laughs) We need that at least. And I would be the first millionaire in my family if that were to happen. And I'm not not looking for much. I want to build it and pass it down or, you know, make sure that, two, three generations from now, like that name holds up and is impacting somebody else's life. That's really what it's about for me. That's my definition of success. Okay. So seven figure bank account. Yeah. That's, that's success. Easily, too. effortlessly. Yeah. Not, I just made it to 999,000 and <laughs> I get that one dollar. I don't want that. Like I need it to be effortlessly flowing. I okay. think we're both building that. I mean, mm-hmm. hearing your story. Uh, yeah, we're working yeah, on it. I would say that. that. Yeah, okay, we getting there. Get Damn, there. we getting there. We getting there. Okay, okay. We, getting there. <laughs> we getting there. We getting there. I got a question for you, Courtney. Yeah. Oh, what's up? Yeah, so, so if, if you if you couldn't do anything really, oh related, god, no not mortgage, possible. Officer, it ain't even. Say, let's just think. What? No appraiser. I, what would you mm-mm. do in life if you could not be a real estate? That's a agent? great question. Literally, actually. guys, I can't. You do gotta anything. do something, though, Courtney. What? Something. You can be a housewife. Attend my kids' soccer games. Housewife. I can't do that. What I could do, though, is I would quit all of this and have my sister run it all. If my kids go pro, which by then, I should be well out of this business. I'm 38. 
my oldest is 11. So if he goes pro, what, 10 years from now, I'll be 48. And this all, this should all be running without me, without question. Mm -hmm. I would want to follow him. I would go to every game. Like, literally, what brings me so much joy is watching them. Literally. So for me, I just... I'm simple. Like, I like what I like. Like, everybody wants to get me out of real estate. I can't do it. But what if? Fashion, traveling, would you like to be a travel blogger? Oh, yeah, blogger? I love traveling. Travel I mean, I, I travel. I don't, I don't know about the blogging part unless travel somebody agent? else is doing that for me. No. That doesn't get me, you know. Yeah, no. It don't wake you up? No. Morning, huh? Like, I kid you not, guys, real estate wakes me up. It real literally estate. wakes me up. And I don't know what element of it. Maybe, you know, the empowering and the educating of people. Don't get me wrong. I'm still, I feel like I'm still trying to find my way Mm -hmm. and figure that part out. But I cannot shake this shit. Mm. I can't shake it. Not Mm. in my mind, not in my household. My kids know, my husband know. Like, I just, that's why I want to be accepted for it. I'm Mm -hmm. tired of people trying to, like, move me here, move me there. Because I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. When they look at Courtney, they need to think of real estate. And I don't mind that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still a person, but I don't mind people just equating me with that. I'm mm-hmm. okay with that. That's cool. It's taking some time, though, for me to, you know, embrace it. But I, I need people to just let me be. Let me work. Let's do what you enjoy. Let me do what I like to do. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? What Nothing about you? Let me that. flip it. If I didn't, uh, if I couldn't do anything in construction, yeah. Yeah. could I be a real estate agent? Oh, you could certainly be I'd that. I'd be a real estate agent. <laughs> You would want to do that? Why? If I wasn't a, Why? I, lo- I love real estate. Like I said early on in college, I knew it was. I mean, you can Google what the most millionaires <laughs> ah, God, do. Here we go. And it's real all estate. All roads lead to all real roads estate. Re- all, all roads lead well, to real estate. Well, you certainly have the foundation for it. Mm-hmm. But if you're serious, let me know. I don't know if I could really make that transition. Okay. I, I think that'd be a conflict of interest being an agent and an inspector. What you think? Um. You, no, I can't see why. Now, I wouldn't do inspections for my own client. Oh, no. So you yeah, can you could separate those. But, yeah, no. You don't think that would be a conflict Absolutely of not. There are a lot of lenders that are real estate agents, too. Really? Yes. Oh, my God, yes. So, for me, I'm not sure if you know much about my history, but I started off 16 working for two real estate agents, top producing agents. I worked in residential sales, um, commercial property management, residential property management, retail mm-hmm. property management. Um, I worked for a property management association. Mm-hmm. I worked in leasing for an apartment community. I've only been in real estate my entire life, basically. Mm-hmm. And all of that has built into the level of expertise the level of understanding of all these different, you know, right. moving parts. I've looked at balance sheets for billionaires mm-hmm. to see what types of things are on their assets. Always real estate. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're right. All roads lead to real estate. Mm. Um, but saying all that to say, not one of those experiences make it a conflict of interest. They only sharpen me to be better to serve my clients. So you having all that experience, I don't know who told you that, but it is the complete opposite. I wouldn't do inspections for my own clients if I were an inspector uh-huh. because I feel like that is just too close for comfort. Right. But you certainly can call out somebody else's shit on their report, mm. you know, for your client. So, no, I need you to get your license if that's what you're interested in. And be. then we can go from there. <laughs> so, we done with this game. No, we you have take you, these shots. No, you have one more question. Oh, I do? Oh, my no, God. I'm so, I got the asking questions. I'm scared. That's okay. Good job. I'm no, okay. that's... So I think we got one more question. We still got these shots. You know how it goes, though. If we, we're just so truthful on this podcast that the shots don't get drank <laughs> until you know until they need to be drank. You know? <laughs> just saying. I think I have. You had yes. to drink one time. Yeah, yes. and I think that Courtney it was in the beginning, like in the you past. know, when I was a little rookie, I guess, in the in the podcast. So what's my <laughs> next question, CJ? Your last and final question, ma'am, is what have you started but never finished in a while? Oh, wow. What have I started? I know my sister is over there chomping at the bit. I feel like everything I start, don't I finish it? It's almost like not okay that 
like even if I don't do it right, I still want to finish it because I started it. So, Terry, you're not going to help me? Like, what if I... Can you? You're my sister. You can't tell me what? Tristan, Lifeline? What if I started that I haven't finished? I got my college degree. I relocated and stayed. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to find something. Terry, you don't have one thing. Peloton, but life ain't over. <laughs> okay, well, so there, there we, we go. It. Damn, oh, man. <laughs> I started exercising, but I didn't finish. Oh, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> you know, right, right. It says Orange yeah. Theory <laughs> Consultant. He, he can okay, get you right. I'll, I'll let you. You know what? As a matter of fact, this is my this is my way to take yeah, my toes. Cheers, JT. Cheers. All right. To Peloton. What do you work out? I, I, not as much as I need to, but I do. I don't believe that for one damn second, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for being for real with me today. Damn, you ain't even bothered by that? Like, that shit. That, that's my drink of choice, Remy. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I drink, Remy. Okay. Yeah, that little, little breakfast for me. <laughs> He said breakfast. <laughs> breakfast the champion. So this has been incredible. So much fun. I know that I'm going to have a long list of questions from the viewers and the listeners about everything about you. Tell the people where to find you before I close us out. Definitely. We, uh, we're on Instagram at C2C Home Inspections. Okay. We're on Facebook at C2C Home Inspections. Uh, online, www.c2chomeinspections.com. And our personal phone is 346. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, we giving phone. out your I'm personal phone. 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 phone? Well, you phone. can do that, too, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> work phone, 346 404 One more time. 346-404-4864. Love it. So that's my time. Um, this has been incredibly insightful. I love to have people on that, number one, are, you know, equally yoked in terms of how we do business, how we treat people, um, how we focus on our business in life. And happy to have you. Glad you stopped by. As a boutique brokerage owner here in Texas, we are always looking to change the narrative in real estate. We like to educate and empower realtors, tenants, landlords, um, professionals in our space. And we hope that we've done that today. Be sure to listen in for the next episode. Later.